the next step in this 1937 Maytag engine. It's a rebuilding of a washing machine motor. Y'all see that stuff right there? Now that's probably an indication that this back and plate, this flywheel has never been cleaned up. Y'all see that dust in there? That's years of accumulation. It's a good thing. This, this particular one right here happens to be a model 72-D. I kind of think it's got a low serial number there, which would indicate it would be the correct one for a 1937 first year model of this 5.8 horsepower. It's, it's a good indication that this is the original backing plate. So you can gain some information, wisdom, make it easy on the next one. You can pick up those little tidbits by, from what you've got right here. This this is a good this is going to be used on this engine this this particular magneta and 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 something that I have observed it's good magnetism on the magnet which it is it's really good observe that right there that it does have quite a bit of pull this is a D a D will be the difference between the D and the DA if you put the ruler and measure that right there the distance on this one from this face to back there and then you measure the one on a DA the DA is thicker hence more magnetism they're really good we're going to clean this one up as we go along we're going to have to do some filing on this 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 is a this is a good example of what you possibly could have there that you're having trouble with but this has been beat severely all the way around it sometime or another with a hammer trying to get the flywheel off so i'm going to take a file and dress this up we, we will clean that up we'll clean up the front part and we're going to paint this flywheel the paint kind of absorbs into the pores of the aluminum and protects it and it kind of looks natural also to explain it to you here is a something out of some kind of probably a modern day car this one does have 0.15 microfad it, it probably worked pretty good but the unique part of this right here and this does have the set of points in there that's all brass and I think at one time they did market a reproduction coil like this right here as a replacement for the Maytag. But anyway, you can see right there on the edge where it's had some scrubbing against the flywheel. It's not down to the metal, so it possibly could go some more. But it does have the two outputs for the high tension in, in pretty close the same place as the original Maytag. It's epoxy encapsulated there. It's probably a really good coil. The problem that this one didn't run is this wire right here was pinched against the housing when, it, when the operator put it on the mechanic. When he put it on the engine, he pinched the wire right there. So most likely just remove that wire back out of harm's way, put it back together. This should be a good, really good hot system. Now I'm not going to use this. This is just I just drug this out for example. This is also a D. It's a model 72D, and uh, it's it's in good condition. There's the two alignment lugs at the bottom. And I'll I'll keep this for later. We do have we will put this probably on that hanging maytag. If I can get back on to the project at hand is this is the backing plate that we're going to use. It appears to have the original condenser in there. I am going to replace that with a that gumdrop type. This one does have a really, really good set of points. Just looking at them visually, th this whole system here looks really good. It's just dusty and dirty. And somebody did go ahead and solder them spark plug wires to them lugs right there. And that's a really bad idea. Just do not even entertain the idea of soldering a spark plug wire onto a Maytag coil. Just do not do it. And if you have been doing it, well, take a couple of points off. Anyway, both of these are done, and I'm going to try to salvage this coil without breaking those off because they're really, really delicate. Be careful if you have one like this cleaning up those two little contacts. But it's really good, and I am going to disassemble it completely 100%. We're going to clean it up. Elementary. 
Elementary Electrics could easily be the name of this series. One of the things, and, and if, if you think that I am actually taking too long to do this Magneto series, if you are doing the work there at your house on your engine, you will appreciate it when you are doing this and remembering back what you just saw now. It might save you some problems. As I was, uh, I was getting ready to take this apart for a show and tell, and when I put this wrench on here, this is the first thing you want to take off because once you get that off of there, then you got to hold this out there in mid air and take that apart. This is the easy way. Anyways, when I, when I turned that bolt, I discovered that it was actually loose. That bolt right there was definitely not. See, it can almost just come right on off there without even a wrench being on there. So that could have been the sole problem of this of of what if if that's the reason that the engine quit running it may just got uh, laid on the sideboard and neglected until the point that no one wanted it we we don't know the history the family tree so to speak we don't know that so and that's the reason that for the complete disassemble if you if you just assume that this condenser is good uh, believe me take this as advice do not assume this condenser is good if you've got one that's old by all means it needs to be replaced I, I, that's the condenser out the and there is a snap ring on this this set of points right here they're fixed it's uh and and actually see Maytag's I'm going to get that little snap ring up. Y'all see that? Can you see it? I'll show it to you up close after a while. We see that little snap ring? Don't lose it. Don't let it fly over yonder. And observe how many spacers. This, after up on closer inspection, I found out that these spark plug wires are not factory original on this end. They have been snipped off and replaced. Don't lose them little parts. Don't worry about where they go. You will figure that out. But I'm just going to snip these spark plug wires off, get rid of them, because they are of no, they, they ain't no use of one to keep them around. Uh, observe that you do have a lock washer and the little uh, C-clamp thing there. Okay, we've got them loose. The only other screw on the back is the... I'm going to go ahead, this one has got the uh, soldered on ends. I'm going to snip them off. Uh, so to get them out of harm's way, I'm just snipping the wire back there. Now don't snip the little, don't snip the little thing, and then you pull us out. We're gonna throw that away. It's no good. And the other one, uh, the same fate for it.